Ian McPherson has been a crowd favorite at many tournaments over the years. Known for his energetic and always attacking style, he has represented the Alliance team well. With the Kennesaw Mountain National Battlefield Park as a backdrop, I sat down to get to know him a little better. Ian, you've always been one of my favorite guys to watch compete. Thank you. I think it was Purple Belt that I saw you the first time, and I didn't know who you were, but you're easy to spot with your long hair <laughs> and your grappling style. You're always putting it all on the line and, and constant movement. I've never seen you stall at all. Where does this all or nothing attitude come from? Well, hard to say if that's myself or what I come from. At, at Alliance, we encourage aggression. Uh, Jacques Ray and Lucas are always telling us, attack, don't just sit there. You need to be moving. You need to do something. Uh, it was actually my high school wrestling coach who introduced me to jiu-jitsu in uh, 2002. And having come from that background, again, the, uh, the focus is aggression, attacking. If you're not attacking, you're defending, and you need to be doing something all the time, not wasting precious seconds. We only have 10 minutes to do whatever we need to do, and uh, then it's over. So you better make something happen. So you started in 2002. What was it that, when did you know that you were hooked on jiu-jitsu? Well, like I say, I, I entered straight out of wrestling. I was never a great wrestler. It, I was mediocre. Having come from a good team, how do you stand up to some of the, at the time, top guys? The answer is I couldn't, but uh, with that knowledge, I was able to, when I started jiu-jitsu anyway, hold up great against the other white belts. That worked out good. So after a few local tournaments and some success, it was clear that I'm going to be here for a while. And was the Alliance headquarters the, the first place you started? Yeah, right at uh, Jacques Ray's school in Atlanta. Here we are, fast forward 10 years later, same school, same instructor, same good vibe. I love the place. It's home. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with Jacques Ray. He's the instructor. I'm the student. We actually don't spend that much time outside of the school with each other because he has important things he needs to do and I have my things. But on the mat, anyway, we get along great. Uh, he's pretty aggressive with me when I make mistakes, but that's because he wants us to do well and be successful, especially when we represent him. So. I wouldn't have it any other way. No, he takes good care of us. Cobrinha taught at your school for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Would you say that your style is a combination of Cobrinha and Jacare, or who are your main technical influences? Well, anyone, as a trainer yourself, you know anyone you work with, their style rubs off onto you. I think we were talking earlier, you have your style and what your instructor does, and usually what you end up with is a compromise somewhere in the middle. Well, rather, what I've got is a reflection of Jacques Ray, Cobrinha, and now Lucas and myself. I think it's a great blend because they have, they have their own unique styles that, that do complement each other. So Ian, what's your favorite open guard pass? Open guard, all right. Glad you asked, Jake. Here we are, we're playing open guard. Maybe you're controlling the sleeves. I'm going to take one hand and weave it all the way under your legs. Here I'm holding your quad right here. I've got to keep a tight grip on this leg because the second I let it go, what are you going to do? Yes, or you'll triangle me even worse. Mm -hmm. So keep a death grip here. All I'm going to do is punch this grip through. See what I'm doing while I drop my shoulder, right in the center of your chest. We're gonna throw this leg out here. This is not, this is not done in stages. All three of these motions are together. This is very explosive. So here, control the legs. I'm gonna step under your legs. I'm still holding both of these. Can you squirm these? Nope. Not so much and lock the position. Mm -hmm. Now let's say I'm doing this and you block me. I can't, it's just not gonna work. 
I'm going to go the other direction instead. So I'll reach this hand through. See I'm gripping the collar? It's high. It's low. There's a lot of slack here. So grip it high. I'm still controlling your other leg. And come around. See why I'm putting the pressure Oh tight? yeah. This should be so tight you want me to pass. Yep. Those are great. Now, these are in no particular order. So I can begin passing this way. You block me. And I counter the other way again. And if you'll block that, I go to the first one. And we can do this into infinity. Okay. You feel resistance, you just go the other way. Absolutely. So, I don't want you to think of the, the, these as two passes, rather they're one pass. Mm -hmm. For people that only know Jacare as a coach and not necessarily as a teacher, what, what do you think are his strong points as a teacher? Consistency. Like I say, it's been 10 years. The school still operates the same way. We're re learning the same old school moves as uh, back in the day. Uh, although we do get uh, the more cutting edge techniques as well. But uh, consistency, uh, hard work, yes, but uh, consistency. We know when class is gonna start, what to expect, uh, which is hard wor work and I think the results speak for themselves. There's a few academies like yours that have somebody that represents the old school and somebody sure. that represents the new school. Do you think that's the best combination? It's my opinion, but yes, yes, you need, you need them both. Uh, the old techniques work. You look at any of the old school competitors like uh, Cron Gracie, who doesn't play a lot of open guard, He's good. He's good with old school techniques. But then we have Cobrinha, who's the opposite and is also very successful. So uh, I think that's the recipe to get the best of both worlds. Do you feel like the old style techniques keep you grounded? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the same old rules still apply. Don't put your hand out there or you'll get arm barred. It's mm -hmm. still true. Nothing's changed about that. Here we are. Um, but then the game has evolved also. Things change, particularly at the upper levels. Uh, there are exceptions to the rules. Like, you see a lot of black belts turn their back. You learn on day one you're not supposed to do that, but at the upper levels, things, things change. Yeah. So... You've had a ton of wars on the mats, um, all of them very uh, dynamic matches. But which one stands out to you as being one of your favorites? Oh, there are a lot. Probably my match with Eduardo Tellis at uh, the 2011 Worlds. Uh, maybe I did lose. I lost 0-0 on advantages. But I have a lot of respect for Eduardo. And it's always interesting to fight the legend, any legend, and uh, do well. Uh, he's a cool, interesting, humble guy. Um, and he was Cobrinha's teacher, as well as Lucas's, so there's some lineage there. Uh, I'd say that was my best match ever. If you could choose your next opponent, who would it be? Ooh. That's a tough one. Well, probably DJ Jackson, which, <laughs> which works out because I'll get a piece of him this weekend. That's right, Be tomorrow. And I don't say that because uh, I disrespect him, but rather because I do respect him as a competitor. I've seen him around for a long time. I know he's very capable. He's uh, been on a tear over the last few years, uh, so I'd like to test myself mm -hmm. against him. And tomorrow will be a fun opportunity to try just that. All right. Has anything changed for you since you got your black belt as far as competing? A Only lot of people talk about the black belt division being so deep, and you might be going against guys that have been in black belt for 10 years. So sure. do you get a little more conservative, or do you, do you not change anything? Well, like you say, there's, there's no ceiling at the black belt level, at which point guys graduate. No, it's, it's into infinity. So 
yes, I'm a small fish in a very large pond. Uh, the main difference is I'm not doing as well anymore. Uh, I'm the little new guy again, but what do you expect? What, the, the, when you're fighting at the world-class level, there are no such things as easy matches anymore. There are no good draws. There, there are no preferable ways to write the division because it's going to be rough no matter what you do. But that's how it has to be. I mean, that's why it's meaningful to even get to that level, let alone do well there. Yeah. Ian, what's your most successful sweep? All right, good question. Let's jump right in. We're gonna be in the butterfly guard here, controlling the lapels, and we all know the arm drag where we come here, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll start it, but we wanna sweep. We're not going for anything else. So this free hand, I'm holding your tricep here, will come right to the lat. I'm grabbing right on your ribs. Do you feel this? Mm -hmm. I'll sit back and I'm gonna lift you with this leg as I kick with the other. Here. And come on top. We still have the arm in case we wanna attack it. But that's our sweep. That's nice. Again, here we are, other direction. Arm drag, we'll pause right here. It's very easy to grab right under the armpit. Sit back, do you see the kick here? Do you feel how, yeah. how well that elevates you? And usually it's very easy to take this out. Almost no one will lock the guard here with their back turned because that exposes all sorts of bad things. Right, like all good sweeps, there's a moment there where I just feel uh, weightless. Good. Excellent. Um, what do you do when you go for the arm drag? And they come here. You still do the move. Just keep continuing. You can still hold here. Unless the guy is very fast and can push, push you away and make space. See, I want to be tight. Mm. Unless you are very fast or you're just expecting me to do this, as long as we're good and close. It doesn't matter what's okay. between us. This will work great. Okay. And then what do you do if an arm drag this leg comes up? It's a single. Yeah. Nice. You know that yep. sweep yep. single. Yep. Yeah, they're giving it to you. It's the easiest sweep you'll ever get. Okay. <laughs> this is your train station your canvas, your metronome, your cable bridge, the steel threads of your past suspending the blueprints of your future. Your courtroom bench, you pass sentences to all those that accept mediocrity. You traverse the road less traveled, every win a friendly hitchhiker, every loss an unwanted stowaway. Your country. Defend what you have built. The natural ingredients in Defense Soap proven effective against grappling related skin infections. Go to DefenseSoap.com to learn more. You're one of the best American homegrown Jiu Jitsu guys out there. Do you? Do you identify? But do you identify that with that? Do you feel like I'm a white American jiu-jitsu guy, <laughs> or do you just see it as as just another guy in America? Uh, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just a guy. I, I've never thought of myself as a competitor or an athlete. I'm just a guy who likes jiu-jitsu. Yes, it is special to be recognized and thought of as as a good competitor, but. Uh, during training, we're there to roll and have fun. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I think a reputation is a nice bonus, by the way. And I think there are a lot of 
good upcoming Americans coming through the pipes that will uh, mix up the game in the next few years. How important is it for you to get a gold medal at the Black Belt Adult Division? Very. In the world? You know, for most of us, the ultimate goal is to win world. Yes, that, that would be a dream come true, yes. A at least a single uh, gold medal at the world. Is it a deal breaker? Not necessarily. I'm not going to die if I don't make it. I'll, I'll be okay if I get a bronze or don't get on the podium at all. But um, yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be very nice. I, I feel fortunate that my self-concept doesn't come from my jiu-jitsu performance. No, it comes from other things. Uh, although I'm still going to do everything I know possible to get that gold. Like you alluded to, you do have a day job. Sure. Have you ever thought about giving that up and focusing on jiu-jitsu full-time? We've all tinkered with, <laughs> with that thought, but I like to have food on my table and to be able to make a decent living. Yes, I've considered scrapping the rest of my life and uh, focusing on jiu-jitsu, but it's not feasible. It, we love jujitsu. We all do, but just like yourself, I got to pay the bills somehow. I put myself through school while training full time. I think it is. I think it's possible to lead a normal lifestyle and be a jujitsu guy full time. Uh, in fact, one of the themes uh, of my black belt speech was balance in in life, not necessarily just on the mat. So yes, we're all training hard to do our best, but uh, a lot of us have families that need us, that we can't neglect, they need their fair share with us. Jobs or careers, uh, schooling, there are many of these, but I think there's something to say for being a well-rounded person rather than just being a great jiu-jitsu competitor. And I think this, a lot of people are not gonna like me saying this, I think this is one of the few destructive sides of jiu-jitsu when we see people uh, sacrificing other parts or other or, or all parts of their life but at its expense. But isn't that what's needed to succeed, to get a gold medal at it, the world? Is it? I, I, I don't know. Aren't most gold medalists full-time jiu-jitsu guys? Though? Yeah, yeah, they are. I think a few have slipped through the cracks. I intend to, definitely. I think it can be done, but uh, that's a question time we'll have to answer. <laughs> so far, though, you're, I think, more correct than me. Yes, the, the more you put into this, the more you're getting out of it. Yes. Ian, I see you get a lot of omoplatas in competition. What do you do when the guy tries to defend it? All right, well, let's see a few defenses and we'll go over the counters. First of all, here we are, it's sunken in. And sometimes the guy will grab inside his own thigh. You ever see this? Yep. Guys do this sometimes. It, particularly if you're a larger guy, this is not <laughs> going to come out. Some guys specialize in this particular defense. So we're gonna drop the arm completely and go for something else. we look here, the feet are dangling. So get a good grip. What I want to do is put this as close to your butt as possible. This is tight. If this is out here, I'm not as strong. So I want to really put this in. And if you're smart and know how to defend this and kick this out, yeah, usually you'll physically kick out like as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. And you let go of the arm because you were holding this leg. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're holding it. You're kicking. And you let go. Not, not defending it the way you were. Right. Okay. Let's go over another one. Another one. A lot of guys do is they'll get here and they'll free the arm by rolling through here. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we do that. You roll through. First of all, it's my job to keep a good tight grip on this so you don't 
pull it out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come up and roll back. And do you see how the arm was out here dangling? I'm going to cup this. Feel how tight this is? Yeah. If I want, I can even put my hands together. And with this all tangled up, you're not going to roll through again. Do you usually get the omoplata the first time, or do you usually get a secondary version of it depending on how they defend? It's hit or miss. Completely dependent on what they do. It's about equal between these, but the series works, mm -hmm. is the point. Okay. You'll get something. All right.